Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us and the dread free Zoom. Did I get that right? It's my own, you know, sounds it's, about right, right? Yeah, that's close. Yeah, design dread free meetings. <laughs> um, please excuse me as I'm like doing two different screens. So if I look away, you'll understand. But one thing that we're doing new this brand new year of 2022 is trying to improve along with this uh, presentation. So I've included our mission statement on the screen for you to be able to read. Hopefully you have already read it as you will also move into a little bit of I'm every woman because that's exactly what we should be celebrating. Uh, for those of you that do not know me, I am Yorel Marshall, Yorel Silverio Marshall, class of 96, and I am the programming chair for the WLC, which I absolutely love to do because I get to create and team up and collaborate with amazing women to be able to showcase all the talent that exists uh, within the Trinity alumni circle and women identifying. And let's get the show started. How's that? So some housekeeping. Let's see, what do I have for you today? First, this show, the show, this event will be recorded. And depending on how things go, if we need to stop it, just let us know in terms of your comfort level. But we're hoping that you will uh, participate as much as possible because that's part of the intention is not only to learn, but to put it into practice so that you can then take and run with it at any future event. Um, I would like to introduce you to Beth Miller, IDP student class of, what is it, Beth? 2000, 2000. 2000, oh my mm -hmm. goodness. You're doing pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> so uh, she is gonna tell you a little bit about CEF in the meanwhile, I'm just going to let you know that she has 20 plus years of experience as a nonprofit leader, and she's very passionate about history, education, creativity. She is the executive director of the Creative Education Foundation, known as CEF, and she'll tell you more about it. Uh, Beth actually taught writing for 10 years at Trinity. And she served as a writing fellow at Quinnipiac. And uh, I'm only going to keep it very brief because, again, I think that her expertise is going to be on display <laughs> this evening in terms of the presentation. But she is being joined by a couple of her uh, team mates, I would say, uh, from CEF. We have Beth. Slazak, and she's a seasoned CPS and improv facilitator. And let me tell you, I'm already learning the art of improv just in terms of meeting with her. Um, she's also a trainer. Beth manages education initiatives and event logistics as conference manager for the Creative Problem Solving Institution, or CPSI, produced by CEF. And then Beth is trained in CPS, applied improv, faith and creativity, resiliency training, growth mindset training, play and creativity, humor in the workplace, improv for at-risk students. She's run the gambit. She knows what she's doing. And then let me introduce you to Missy Carvin, who serves as the manager for programs and evaluation at, the, at CEF. Her past experience in new product development market research means that she frequently works with professionals in agencies and client side companies who are in marketing, consumer insights, strategy, branding, and advertising. Missy applies her strengths of activator, woo, communication, strategy, and positivity to her approach to business, parenting, and life in general. And as I said, I can attest it has been a pure joy just meeting with them in planning, and I look forward to everything that these ladies have to share. So, 
with no further ado, here you go. All right. Thank you so much, Yarell. Um, so great to be here with you all. I'll just give you the wicked quick Reader's Digest version of what CEF is so we can get to the good stuff. Um, so the Creative Education Foundation was founded in 1954 by Alex Osborne, the man who invented brainstorming. Uh, when he, he retired, he went back home to Buffalo and established the Creative Education Foundation because he deeply believed in everybody's na natural creativity and he wanted to teach them how to be more deliberately creative. Um, he established the Creative Problem Solving Institute, affectionately known as SIPSI. Um, this is a five-day creativity and leadership conference we run to this day. Um, this year will be live again, which we're super excited about. We also published the Journal of uh, Creative Behavior, which is the longest running academic creativity journal in the world. Um, in addition to that, we do personal and professional development training for businesses, organizations, and my particular passion area, which is public schools. Um, so what you're going to get here is a little bit of a taste of how we adapted when the pandemic hit. We were actually already a virtual office, so we didn't have to make that pivot. We already had that capacity. But I charged Beth and Missy with finding a way to really deliver interactive programming that didn't feel like it wasn't boring, that could help replicate what we're able to do in the classroom when we're live. Um, and they really knocked it out of the park and, and helped bring in a whole other array of programs that we're able to offer by mastering this virtual space and bringing that interactivity and the best of creative problem solving facilitation to, um, to the virtual world. So with no further ado, I will um, pass you off to my, my colleagues, Beth and Missy. Thank you very much for that. Um, I, we're Beth and Missy, and we are going to work with you for the next 40 minutes or so, giving you information to make all of your meetings much easier and more delightful. Um, and we want to let you know, as you're all called out, uh, Missy and I are improv practitioners. And so for this next 40 minutes or so, we're going to institute improv rules and what that means for you is whatever you say whatever you do right now when you're with us is right i cannot make this promise once you leave this meeting if if you have that power to make it so please make it so but right now right here everything that you do or say is going to be right and we share that with you because we're going to ask you to do things and say things and we don't want you to be nervous we want you to be excited about that. It is going to be interactive and fun. And we're gonna start with a little game, which I was checking out like the graduating classes and there's many of you who graduated with me. So I know you'll remember this game. We're gonna play Simon, Simon Says. So if you are unfamiliar when Simon says to do something or maybe we'll be Simone. <sighs> Remind me to call Simone it Simone. Says, <laughs> when Simone well, says to do something, you, <laughs> when Simone says to do something, you do it. If Simone doesn't say, then you don't do it. So right now, Simone says, touch your head. Simone says, make a funny face. Simone says, touch your nose. Someone says, stop touching your nose. That's kind of gross. Turn around. Yep, that. Oh, you got several people. <laughs> Someone did not say. That's perfect. Because what right, we want to do right now is, it is fine. Was anybody injured in that? No, as long as you didn't fall off your chair. So it is okay, whatever you do. So Simone says, Add your name and favorite color to chat. Tries to type ridiculously quickly while she does this. Uh, Simone says, turn your camera off. Some of you were already ahead of that game. <laughs> Simone says, turn your camera on. Put it back. Yay! Simone says, thank you so much for playing and getting involved with us. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So um, that was, and I'm gonna update this slide to say Simone says for just so you know. So we'll all know that we were here when it happened. Um, so uh, one of the things we wanna just 
start off right off the bat is when you're thinking about some kind of a virtual something, right? At this point, we have all been in Zoom and I, we, Beth and I have a nasty habit of using Zoom the way that most people use the word Kleenex, right? It, a Kleenex is a tissue, right? A Zoom is a virtual meeting. It's a virtual space, whether or not it's actually got a capital Z and pays the folks who own this company. Uh, so this can be a go-to meeting. This, can, if, I'm so sorry, if it's Teams, you have my condolences and I'm sorry. Um, but whatever you're on, all of this stuff will work for all of those things. But when you're planning something in the virtual space, right? Think about what is the purpose of this right now? Is this a meeting? Am I running a training? Am I holding a safe space workshop for people to come and talk and interact? Um, what am I hoping to achieve? Why am I doing this instead of sending an email? is a really good question to ask yourself. So whatever your purpose is, you want to be careful to set things up to support that. For example, um, at the start of a training like this one tonight, it's great to have a slide showing at the beginning. Yarel had the like purpose, right, of the, the Women's Alumni Association so that you knew you were in the right place, right? I clicked on the right Zoom link. I'm in the right meeting. If you're going to be having an intimate meeting um, where your team is going to be doing a big work session or you're doing something with your faith-based organization or whatever, and there's going to be a lot of conversation, you probably don't need a slide to get started. In fact, that'll cover up more faces. It'll make it harder to see the other participants. So even from the very, very beginning, knowing what your purpose is can help you set up um, not just the activities um, and the, the conversation that you have, but the very virtual environment that you're in. Um, one other thing you'll see us do a lot um, is we are going to do a lot of uh, turning slide sharing off when we do debriefs and discussions, because we think it's a lot easier to do those when everybody can see everybody's face and not everybody knows how to move the slider and make the slides smaller and the faces bigger and all that stuff. So that's that's our little kicker offer. Remember what you're ha why are you doing this instead of an email? Um, so another thing to keep in mind are energizers and icebreakers. Uh, these are often terms that are used interchangeably. And I'm not saying that Beth and I get annoyed when that happens now, but we kind of maybe do. Um, because they're different. They're different things. Energizers inject energy. They are the coffee, the chocolate coated espresso beans of the meeting world, right? We're all, you need an energizer when? After lunch. You need an energizer when you've done a, a large chunk of important work or you have presented a big piece of content and people are kind of digesting that. Icebreakers break the ice. They get people talking and talking might be via chat, it might be a bit, a breakout room it might be something that they share on screen but it gets people talking about your content um either way you should plan for them at regular intervals uh, and especially depending on your content and your group dynamics you might do them more often if you're talking about really kind of heavy topics and you need to get that energy back up um but at the very least every 30 to 40 minutes people need to look away from their screens uh, no sorry 30 to 40 minutes they should move they should have an opportunity to stretch or get up and walk away um, and every like 10 minutes or so, have them close their eyes to do something or write something down, but look away from that screen because Zoom fatigue is real. Um, so already you've done these. Congratulations. You are like gold star scholars on this stuff because you've already done an icebreaker. Uh, we did Simone Says. This was not content, right? Um, it was just an introduction to the topic. We got you to do things like turn your camera on and off, type in the chat, um, pay attention to what we were saying, all things we'd like you to continue to do throughout the session. So um, that's what we did with our icebreaker, it was kind of introduce behaviors in a really low risk, fun way. Um, and energizers are really much more like get the energy up, bring people back. If you give people a break, start with an energizer. 
Um, a lot of times when you would do this in, a, in an in-person session, you can do the same thing in a virtual session, right? So um, get people talking or um, splitting up the work, or if we've gone on a tangent, bringing them back. Um, and our very favorite, which you'll get to experience a little bit later, our favorite uh, energizer in the virtual environment is actually breakout rooms. Because we have yet to have people come back from a breakout room where somebody isn't laughing or smiling, or at the very least putting in chat, thank you to room four, you guys were great, right? Because when we can connect, that brings the energy up, even, even for our introverts. We're gonna talk fast. So please throw questions in chat or just come off mute and ask them. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna assume I have sent to move forward. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've got that information that Missy was talking about, if it's a meeting or a training, virtually you don't have the wall space that you had before. And so a great solution for those are whiteboards, digital whiteboards. There are a bunch of different kinds. You've got mural, Miro. Yes, they. I don't know why they had to name them practically the same thing. They're completely different. They function similar, though. Uh, Jamboard, Envision, Concept Board. Uh, what's great about them? They are asynchronous. They exist outside of your Zoom meeting. So you can be working on both. And then if the Zoom meeting needs to go away, you can continue to work on that. Six hours later, you have got a great idea. You can go back to them. Uh, they create a visual artifact. We are using Mural today. This is exactly what Mural looks like. And you're going to get a copy of this so that you have that information later on whenever you need it. Uh, you can add links into them. You can add files. They hold tons of information in one space that can be expanded by going like this. Uh, digital, digital expansion does not work on the book that you're reading on the side uh, in the living room. Tried that yesterday, still doesn't work. Um, Mural is fantastic because Mural lets you celebrate. Watch Yay, the screen. Ah. Digital confetti. And it's a great way to pull in people from different locations at different times. The opposite side of that is though, it is challenging for shorter meetings or groups that are not going to meet long term the first time you use it with a group you're going to have to teach them how to use it so that's an additional meeting and additional learning and there they can be titchy challenging they work well for longer facilitations longer meetings ongoing meetings you've got to have 3 hours really invested in it before you're like it's worth it they are work for they're great for people who are really interested in playing around with it beforehand people that are like that they want to experience and fiddle with new virtual toys um they're great for groups that are meeting over long periods of time or just people who already know the platform they are harder for shorter meetings so we just gave you three boom, boom, boom things all at once. It must be time for an energizer. If you could grab the weirdest object that is near you and give it a name, it's like a job title and put it in chat, what you've got. And you can show it on the screen if you want to. I, I uh, type with mine. Oh, I love these. Woo! All right. I'm just trying to get brownie if, points with the Trinity College banner. I see you. <laughs> name your item and what it does in chat. And then Missy is going to talk to us about breakout rooms. Okay, but I gotta put mine in chat. Touch my emotions. I really love that Zoom now has autocorrect. Yay! We'll we'll watch 
We'll watch for all your names. Money. So many motions. So whatever you name your thing, you can you can give it a job. Tell us what it does. Uh, so that's a quickie little energizer. Um, do, 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 do. So one of the things we mentioned that we love breakout rooms as an energizer specifically. Um, so to make sure that you are um, using them well, we've got a couple, a couple tips, a couple uh, tips and tricks for you. Um, first of all, just think about what do I want people to talk about? The whole idea of a breakout room is to get them to talk or work together on something. Um, we highly recommend that you establish an order for people to go in before you send them. Uh, for my very favorite one is whoever's had the most caffeine so far today. That's my personal favorite. The person with the most caffeine gets to go first because they can't sit still and they probably have to pee anyway. Uh, whoever has the birthday closest to today or to whatever major thing you're celebrating, um, be wary of calling out physical features. Um, uh, like the shortest person, I know I'm vertically challenged. I get it. We don't need to call it out in a big group. Um, or the person with the longest hair. You just don't want to like make people feel weird or uncomfortable or feel weird that they feel weird or uncomfortable. Um, so often when we do sessions in person, Beth and I will pair people up to talk. Um, we'll have two people sit together, face each other, chit chat. The challenge with that virtually is if you only have two people in a breakout room and one of their Wi-Fi dies, you have the other person left all alone. Uh, and that's not a fun place to be. Um, so two can just be challenging, particularly if you have a group that you don't know what their Wi-Fi, computer, battery, et cetera, situation is. Um, and if you have more than like, five or six people that really allows some folks, uh, particularly your introverts, to kind of hide in the background, to not really, not really participate because there's enough other people to keep the conversation going that it doesn't feel awkward. Um, and that can be okay. You might even want to assign somebody to be the scribe and that person doesn't have to talk. They get to just write things down. Um, so again, just like figuring out what your digital environment looks like you also want to use your session objectives to determine that group size. Do I want to have a, a triple of people and they're going to have this lovely little intimate conversation and I'm going to give them a little extra time because I'm trying to build intimacy and connection or do I want to send a group of six or eight people to a breakout room to do some brainstorming and then because I, I need them to build energy and I need there to be a bunch of them kind of all popping up ideas at the same time. So what is it you're trying to do that's going to help you determine your group size. We highly recommend putting the directions for what folks need to do in chat before they leave so that they can still see it when they get into their breakout room. Um, this is specifically a Zoom thing. In Zoom, you can see the chat for the room that you're in. So you can see, you can all see this, the main chat now. If you go to your breakout room and you have a chat in your breakout room, you can't see that chat or other people can't see that chat when you come back to the main room. It'll still be on your feed, but it won't be on everybody's feed. However, you can also, when you go to the breakout room, still see the chat from the main room when you left. Also, everybody's got their phone. So just put the instructions up on the screen and tell them to take a screenshot. Here's what you need to do. Go do it. Um, if you're adding files or other materials uh, to the chat, if you have a worksheet or um, you know some background information that they should be referencing, put that in the chat with enough time so that they can download it, figure out where in the heck Zoom saved it on their computer, open it up, and then have it in front of them when they get to the breakout room. And the timing is the single hardest thing to figure out because you want to balance having enough time to have their conversation, um, but not so much time that they're kind of twiddling their thumbs or not sure what to do. Um, we tend to err on the side of, you're gonna have less time to talk, but you're going to, um, you're gonna get to, to 
come back energized by it. Um, and you won't get to quite finish your thought and that'll be okay. Because um, you also don't want the breakout room to take over the whole rest of the session either. Um, we're big fans of using the timer feature if that's something that you have access to. Um, it, it sets the breakouts to automatically close after a certain amount of minutes and the people in the breakout rooms can see that amount of time. Um, and then also in Zoom particularly, you need to figure out um, if you're, how long you're gonna give them before the room closes because the little message pops up, the Zoom room is about to close. At least half your participants click leave meeting instead of leave breakout room. So you need time for them to come back into the meeting when they realize they've done that. Um, we always try to message people and say, wait until the room closes you out. Stay till the end. So speaking of breakout rooms, um, we're gonna give you about, I would say we could even, we'll be really generous. You're gonna get six minutes. You're welcome, everybody. That's, we never give people that much time, uh, but we like you. So you're gonna get about six minutes. You're gonna go into breakout rooms. Melissa is getting them set up. Um, and we both put the instructions in chat. Um, so chat with the other people in your room about three things. Um, that you, up to three things that you wanna try in your next virtual meeting. And we're gonna start with the person who graduated most recently. Please note, I did not say graduated from Trinity. If you have done something since and you graduated, go you and own that and you guys go first. Uh, so you'll have first have to figure out in your room who graduated most recently. And then you'll have about six minutes um, to chat with the other folks about things you wanna try in your next virtual meeting. So Melissa, are we are we ready to go? Yarrow is giving you the high sign. So this is where we wave goodbye and wish you a lovely <laughs> conversation. And we'll see you when you get back. Um, so I would love if um, y'all could put in the chat for me and I have my chat so I can see it. Um, but put one thing that you're kind of excited about trying or one thing that somebody else said that you thought that was brilliant. You can feel free to steal someone else's idea right now. Because whatever you do is right. Mm -hmm. Including full out taking other people's ideas right now. That's fine. Normally frowned on in an academic place. <laughs> and maybe if you cite them. Yeah. Oh, icebreaker. I'm stealing back the Miller's idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but not just sometimes on the icebreakers. We'll sometimes call them off, like warm ups, audience warm ups, right? Because icebreakers, particular, I'm married to a very strong introvert. And if he saw in like icebreaker on the agenda, he would just not go to the meeting. So, um, <laughs> warm ups. <laughs> Might be a kinder way to put that for some people. Energizers. And yeah. that's, a, that's a good way to frame it because an icebreaker should warm you up to whatever topic you're going to be working on. Like that Simon says with the screen things, because we're going to talk about Zoom. Yep. We're going to break and, like, that. Your brain's a muscle. Yeah. You got to. So speaking of, yeah, Jamie literally slides off screen. Like just can't see me, can't make me. Um, so speaking of breaking, oh, some examples of energizers. Yes, yes, yes. Almost anything you could use as an icebreaker, you can also use as an energizer. Um, but Ruth, I appreciate the segue because that's literally the next thing I want to talk about, which is breaking out of the Zoom frame. And most of these also serve as an energizer. Um, so my favorite thing to say to people that I haven't seen in a while is, oh, you do still exist below the shoulders. <laughs> because like this is the view we've all had of people for two years now, right? Um, and so anybody else still kind of feel like Alice from the Brady Bunch when you get on a Zoom call and it's just all these little boxes? I've unfortunately learned that that is a generational um, question and that my 15 year old does not know why that's funny. I failed as a parent. Um, anyhow, we like to think of ways to just break this box a little bit. So literally send people for a walk. Go take a walk around your house and notice how many things, blah, blah, blah. I'm working with second graders. How many things 
start with the letter B, right? Or have a B sound at the beginning. If I am working with, you know, C-suite executives, go around, find how many things you bought on sale because they all think that price doesn't matter. <laughs> They're all wrong. Um, so go take a walk, take a break, uh, put some, um, my other favorite energizer aside from breakout rooms is to play music. And I love that URL like started with music. Um, play some music, throw Spotify on in the background and turn your camera off and just let people boogie down for a minute. Um, go on a treasure hunt, literally give them things to go find. Uh, you know, come back when you have three editions, past editions of our, our organization's magazine right, or whatever. Um, my favorite is, yes, turn on your mic, sing. Um, write on an actual easel. So use your physical environment that you are in to be part of the Zoom environment. Um, fun fact, if you take your standard issue plastic folding table, like you would take to like a Cub Scout popcorn sale or a Girl Scout cookie sale, and you put that sucker so that it's as tall as it can be, and sitting on its skinny end on the bottom, the back, the bottom legs work as a stand and you now have an easel that will hold a flip chart and let you write on it. And it's right within your, your frame. It's like right here. Um, use physical objects in, have people find physical objects. So when we said, find the weirdest thing on your desk, show us a weird thing that gets people laughing. It gets people excited. And then on top of that, any, improv game that you've ever seen anywhere will work for this as well. Um, and we're going to share some resources, including, um, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it, but Beth's got one, at least one that will help you find a whole bunch of other, um, a whole bunch of other uh, energizer activities um, that you can use. So those are some of our favorites for breaking that box. Part of the, the beauty of getting people unstuck is getting them physically unstuck. So unstuck from their chair. So get them moving. It helps trigger thoughts and ideas in a different way. Being very mindful of asking people to do challenging things. You might want to watch it. One of our favorite ones to do is yoga. We've been in conferences where people have played one minute yoga stretches and they've just led people through some chair yoga stretches, very easy things to do to get you moving. Yeah, you're like, oh, crunched. Uh, <laughs> another, another beautiful yoga that's not really yoga at all is improv yoga. And this one is fun, playful, and can get you moving. And we'll do a quick little demonstration because very few people know it. The first person calls on somebody like Missy and then yeah. they give them a yoga move. It's not real. The more ridiculous, the better. So Missy, could you show us how to do, we ran out of coffee. Sure. That person gives us the move and then we all join them. So if you could all join us in, in this, Famous yoga move, we ran out of coffee. The person who demonstrates it then gets to end it with namaste. Namaste. And Jessica then they would call fun. somebody else. Jessica looks fun. Hey, Jessica, would you show us? I know this is a higher level move, but I heard you mastered it. The yoga move. Um, 15 post-its. So this one has movement. I like it. It's a, it's a motion one. And so Jess, you would end us with namaste. Beautiful. And you can go on as long as you want. It's really fun. It's really silly. It gets people laughing. It gets people moving. And it helps to break up that Zoom fatigue. Uh, as Missy said, just having them stand up and move around. Everybody like stand up and run around their desk or 
see what you can grab from the other room. Uh, we did Simon Says, there's Simone Says, great for moving. Laughter yoga, if you Google this, there are lots of ones on YouTube. You can then show that YouTube video of laughter yoga and they're just laughing, different, different ways of laughing. Call a dance break, put on music, turn off camera and let them go wild for one minute. Google has a great free timer so they can see how much time they have left. Uh, or go for a field trip. Send everybody out to get a, a beverage from their kitchen, not out to get a beverage because then, then people get in their car and drive to Starbucks, but out to get a, out to your kitchen. Uh, just anything that you can think of that gets them breaking out of this space and breaking out of this position. All of their chiropractors called you and asked you to get people to move away from their desk. Um, some other helpers we have when you're doing virtual sessions. I cannot tell you enough how amazing Session Lab is. That picture on your screen is our actual Session Lab for this session. You can break it up and see times, activities, assignments. There's also a holding space. We do not get any kickbacks from this, but I can tell you all of our trainings are on Session Lab. They're shareable. We can make adjustments and watch each other doing it. It is fantastic. Um, Playmio group games and activities. There is a charge for Playmio and I don't know how much it is, uh, but it's got some fun games to doing it. Pickles, we also use. That allows attendees to go do a QR code or a website, and then on their phone, they can create a doodle and they show up on screen. So that, that picture on the screen they have, all of those separate images are the different doodles different attendees can have. And it's a great alternative feedback. So um, how are you feeling today on pickles? And you can get people like happy faces or sleepy faces uh, or, or chocolate. I, chocolate is a mood. Mentimeter uh, is great for like, voting or contributing ideas and then people can see it uh and i think the last one was was it just yeah it was just playing me up. i'm imaginary one uh another fun tip that we're going to do right now if you've got the latest update on zoom if you scroll over somebody's face and press down you should get like the finger thing you can move people around. It grabs them and moves them. So you can change oh, the order. You see. People do it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's great if you're doing uh, like a popcorn thing and you want to keep track over who's gone. So I know in the improv game, I went first and then I moved me and then I'm moving Missy because I did her next and Missy had done Jessica. So I can keep moving, seeing who's gone and who hasn't gone or you can, because you know, all of our Zoom screens look different. If you need everybody on your meeting to know that Missy is to the right of Beth, you can go through and have everybody organize and so you've got a similar view of who. So you can all be like that one. Um, and then our last tip slash hack is if you are recording a session or need to take pictures or different things like that, that you need to remember to do, that it's hard to remember to do because everybody's got cottage cheese brain now put them in the PowerPoint. So we have a picture for when we're recording sessions. It's our first slide that says, this session is being recorded. It lets people know they're being recorded and it reminds us to press record so that they are being recorded. And then we always need 
a picture of our training. So we have a smile for the class picture and we ask everyone who can to go on camera and smile. So, hey everyone, if you can, would you go on camera right now and smile in three, two, one. Now, a fun thing to do is then ask everyone to go on camera and do their best roller coaster move. Join me, three, two, one, roller coaster. Yes. <laughs> and you can do as many of those as you need hands. to do. Gas hands. Right. <laughs> so really that good. concludes our 40 minutes of awesome fun with you all. We enjoyed ourselves so much. We hope that you found this valuable and enjoyed it with us. Uh, if you have any questions or you just haven't seen enough of the Beth, Beth and Missy show, we do lots of other things and you can come play with us on Zoom or in real life. <gasps> do that now. Yeah. We've got a variety of workshops. You'll find those on our website under creativeeducationfoundation.org slash workshops. So, you know, organized. Um, and also Beth Miller mentioned at the beginning, Sipsy. Um, Sipsy is like our favorite million days in a row. Uh, There's really only four for you, <laughs> but uh, that will be in June in Buffalo. And we highly recommend um, our emails are on screen here. We'll make sure that they also go into chat. Um, but that concludes our mural. Um, also 10 points if you could have spotted me in that class picture, because that was actually legit my fourth grade class picture. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to see you um, all at Sipsy. Um, Sipsy, just to give you a little taste of it, is um, kind of two, two main track channels. One is our signature process, which is creative problem solving. Creative problem solving is the original Coca-Cola of deliberate creativity processes. It came before design thinking, before agile, before lean, all of those things. Um, that's what our, our founder, Alex Osborne, uh, created, uh, creative problem solving. Um, so we'll teach that. You can get certified in it at the conference. Um, the other track you can take, I like to call our big tent to creativity. Uh, so that you, you can see design thinking, applied improv, mashups of different systems, CPS and lean. Um, so we bring in leaders who are creativity consultants from all around the world to present their expertise in courses that range from 90 minutes to half a day to a full day. Um, it's very, very fun. Uh, Beth and Missy do an amazing job creating an environment of, of play. Um, it's a conference you can wear blue jeans to. Um, you're going to work really hard. You'll laugh a lot, but you're going to work really hard. Um, and we hear that people, you know, people may come for professional development and they learn things that they really want to apply in their lives. And people come for personal development and they find ways to change their company or their business. So um, it's just deliberate creativity with a lot of people who are looking to do things better, smarter, faster, and in more fun ways. If you have any questions, now's the time. Unmute. <laughs> Thank you. One Great question job. in the chat URL was, will the recording be available after? And I assume so, since that's why we're recording. <laughs> it will be available. Uh, we will also be sending you feedback, or a, what do you call that? That thing, to give us feedback. Here we go. I got this. I've been enjoying every evaluation. And I just lost all my words. Um, thank you on for an amazing session. Uh, just like Jessica mentioned, these 40 minutes went by incredibly fast because it was so engaging. And you, I'm already on like page four of notes. So again, thank you. And to everyone in our audience, thank you for joining us. I'm so happy that many of you just reading the chat have gotten so much. Here are some of the upcoming events. And we're always, always, always looking for more ideas as well as speakers, as well as some help. Melissa and I cannot be doing everything on our own. I mean, we're good, but we're not that good, we could always use your input. So if you have any ideas, if you wanna be a part of programming, I want 
help. I would love help. Melissa would want and love help. We have tons of ideas, but you know, it becomes even better when we have the collaboration of you amazing alumni. So thank you and have a wonderful evening. Thanks. Round of applause. <laughs> oh, they can. <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Night, everyone.